My name is Marilyn Edwards. I was born in Hartman, Arkansas. My birthday is August the 24th of 1938. My mother was, she worked at the processing plant in Clarksville, and my father was a coal miner. My father was killed in an automobile wreck when he was 47 years old, and my mother was left to raise a 12-year-old son by herself. Where did you attend school and where did you grow up? I grew up at Hartman, Arkansas, and I went to school at Hartman, Arkansas. When we started to school at Hartman, you started in the back door for the first grade and you graduated in the front door at, at, for, for, your, for your graduation. Tell the story about how you ended up uh, living in Washington County, coming from Hartman to Washington County. Well, my husband, the way we wound up at moving to Washington County was the greatest thing that ever happened to us. My husband was in the Air Force and we went to California to live for a, and we were there about 10 years. And we, we decided that we had children in the fifth grade and in the third grade, and we decided it was time to come back to Arkansas and raise our family. So we started looking for a job. He was trained with the Bank of America after he got out of the military. And he was uh, notified by Charlie Orr, which was a president in one of the banks in Little Rock. We were trying to find something in Little Rock. Luckily, unbeknown to why, we got a call from Ellis Bergen and Hayden McElroy, and they wanted to George to send pictures of the family and send a little bit of the resume. They hired George over the telephone. And I know it's from my good looking picture. <laughs> so tell me, what was it like when you came here and what did you do next? That was really a shock. When we first came here, we drove up here coming on South College coming in that way. That part of town was pretty isolated and it was a little bit rough at the time. And I thought to myself and I said to my husband, what are we getting ourselves into? Whenever we got here, we come on uptown and I saw that there was a tremendous change by doing that. He started looking, he, he went to work on a Monday morning and I was over at the old downtown motor lodge right across the street from the courthouse. That's where I was staying. I started looking for a place to live. There was no rentals in this town. Everything was pretty much full, full at the time because of the college students. I found a house over on Elm Street and we found that house the day that my furniture was being brought in from California. So it started out in a mad rush. When we first got in here, Ellis Bergen was having the bankers of Arkansas were having their uh, annual get together. He told us we needed to go with him to that deal. I didn't even have my clothes unpacked. I had to come up with something to wear and we hit the ground running and we slowed down now, but at that time that was quite an exciting time. Well, how did, tell the story about how you ended up from moving here to becoming a county official. What did you do before then and how did you get to that point? When I first came here, I worked for the University of Arkansas in data processing. I worked for uh, Don Mitchell and I uh, was, went to work. Then finally I moved down and I went to work for McElroy Bank but it was not classified at McElroy Bank. It was Ozark Data Processing. And because when I first moved in here for the company I worked for in California, I had all kinds of computer experience. And I ran a key punch operator, which is a thing of the past now. People don't even know what a key punch operator with a card system. I went to work for Ozark Data Processing for Verd Parker. And I trained almost every key punch operator in Northwest Arkansas. I, we had a class at night and I trained key punch operators. And, but now Verd Parker was the supervisor over that department for the bank. One night I was at the Elks Lodge with my husband and Bill Johnson was sitting there with his wife Cleo. I told him that I was really looking to go to work in the courthouse and he said, come in and see me in the morning and we'll look at your application. The next day, I came into the courthouse. Bill Johnson looked at my application. Judge uh, Val Lester was the county judge at the time. And 
he hired me right on the spot. So I guess you would say that partly of my experience of getting hired was at the Elks Lodge <laughs> because I went to work then for Val Lester and Bill Johnson. We did everything at that time. There was one other lady in the office with me. Her name was Peggy Mollish. Our desk was out on the porch at, in, in, in the old courthouse. It had, they had enclosed it. We did all everything that takes probably 50 people to do now, but we've grown so much, that's what happens. We did warrants, we did payroll, we did purchase orders, we did inventory, we did it all. And Judge uh, Bill Johnson was my boss. One day I told Mrs. Roberts, I said, you know, if you ever have a vacancy in your office, I would like to do it. At that time, I told her, I would like to run for county clerk when you leave. And she looked me in the eye and she said, I don't know why you want to do that because it's damned if you do and damned if you don't. And I said, I still want to try it. So when Emma McKee left to retire, Ruth brought me in to the old courthouse with her as in the county clerk's office and I handled voter registration. I was doing voter registration when the courthouse was being remodeled. This vault behind that where we're sitting now, that's where they had, they tore out the walls and they built that vault back there at the time. Someone made the point when we were doing it that it was a lean-to, so I've always laughed about the lean-to on the back of the courthouse. But I worked in the other office next door and I was working in, they hung a, a plastic sheet over this door to stop the, all that sawdust from coming in here. And I worked in there in that, you know, they worry about getting lung infection. It's a wonder I didn't do that, but that's where I worked. And then when Ruth left office, she endorsed me and I ran for county clerk. And that was in 1976. That was my first endeavor in politics. So what was it like when she talked about when you first got in office and what you did? Uh, our, our job, when I got into office, we were pretty much, we did handle probate. We handled uh, marriage records. We handled guardianships. We handled all of that type of stuff. It was not, you didn't, it wasn't something, circuit clerk did more of the legal stuff with the records, and we did more of the bookkeeping. We paid all the warrants out of the county clerk's office. We processed those, we posted them. And so this was more, the county clerk at that time was more of a bookkeeping department than it is now. So how has that changed? What is it like now? How is it, what did you do before that's now done by who else? Well, uh, what do they do now is kind of hard for me to go back and think about it because they passed some laws and they took what they call the county clerk, or not the county clerk, but this every, all the county, the judges, this, all became circuit judges. And so they took over all of the documentation of that type of stuff. And the probate in some of the other counties was handled by the circuit clerk, but the volume was so great here that the lawyers got together and asked that the probate be left in the county clerk's office. So the county clerk continued to do that even though the law had passed and it was with a, a, a suggestion and a vote from the attorneys and the judges in this county. Uh, talk about some of the people, uh, or talk about your previous, the previous clerk, uh, what, Ruth. Talk, tell me what she was like and who some of the deputies were back in the day. Ruth Roberts was an absolutely outstanding individual. She had very, very high morals. She was a very strict individual. She believed in things being done right the first time. Uh, Ruth was a person to work for because you always knew where you stood with Ruth. Uh, and if someone had a problem, you could go to Ruth and talk to her. But she was, she, she was a very strict individual, but she was kind of like a mother to all of us. She was very, very good to us, all of us. And she was a good uh, county, county clerk. Who were some of the other officials that were here at the, when you started in the early days that you can remember and tell me about? It? Well, now some of the officials that were working in the county clerk's office was Emma McKee, Joanne Perry, Karen Combs, Liz Combs, 
And that may be all of us. That may be all we had in the county clerk's office at that time, and myself. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting someone, but you, that's... You're doing great. T tell me about um, some of the changes that you saw during the time you were in. You talked about the bookkeeping, but what, what were some of the ways that things changed from the time you started to the time you decided? The biggest change I think I saw from 1976 to now is the voter registration. The voter registration was very, very cumbersome. It was something that if you I wanted to, and this could be a very lengthy story, because if you, if you wanted someone to be able to register people to vote, they had to be deputized. The clerk, myself, when I was county clerk, or when Ruth was clerk, had to swear those people in so they could go out and register people to vote. They would set up locations, maybe at the university was always the main location, or they would set up something that for the people to go and register. But when you registered to vote, you registered with four cards. There was always, a, there was three of those cards went into books, and one of the card was for the individual that was registering so that person could take it with them to show that they were a registered voter. But now one of those books was for the school election. And one of them was for the primary, and the other one was for the general election. So every time you did something with one card, you had to do it four times to make sure they all got in those proper books. I have seen envelope boxes or letter boxes lined up six and eight deep that you had to work into those books, and you had a deadline. You had to make sure that you got it right. Now, you know, you can register anywhere, you know. Uh, you know, the revenue office, people can just say they want to go register people to vote. They'd come in and pick up their, the information they needed. But when they got ready to register to vote back in those days, you had to come into the clerk's office. You had to get all these cards. You had to check your cards out. Then you had to take them and go to the people and that wanted to register. And then it was up to that individual that was doing the registration to get those cards back to the clerk's office to be processed. It was a very, very lengthy detail, very time consuming. And then all of those c computer lists had to be printed out, which was antiquated, took forever to get them printed. And those had to be done, and then you had a sheet that you had to be able to send. And, but when you went to vote during those days before they could print the sheet, they had that blue book, or yellow book, or white book, whichever one happened the election it be, and they would have to go in and they would have to sign their name to one of the cards to show that they had actually voted that day. Now, if that person happened to walk in and he got carried away and he's talking to his neighbor like I might have done, then you would sign your name or you'd forget to sign your name. And then the next time those books got ready to be purged, now those had to be purged every year. And once you went in and saw those, and every three years, I think it was three years, then you had to go out and pull all the people that had not voted. You had to pull it out of three books. Everything had to be done in triplicate because of all the, the you know. And then if that person didn't sign his card, is he was classified as not voted, even though he did vote. And then next election, He's madder than old Billy Horns because he knew he signed the card and his card's been pulled for non-voting. That it was a very, very, very uh, rigid system. I will need to say this is very, very nice to have it the way it is now when it's all automated. I know people don't think it's right. I know people are always concerned that maybe something's going on in elections, but most of the people that I've been familiar with and I've worked with Every one of them are as honest as the day is long, and they're there for the good of the county or the school or whoever they're doing registration for. And if, for people to think maybe something is going wrong, it's not going wrong. There's just such a volume of it. The people are trying to do the best they can. And <laughs> my goodness, they pay them a penance, but they don't get paid any money to sit there for 12 hours and be chewed on all day. Those people deserve a star, I will tell you that much. Uh, talk about some of the elections you recall, maybe that stand out over the years. Well, one election that always comes to mind is these, <coughs> excuse me, the state rep race against Bob Fairchild and Rick Osborne. And when everyone went to bed that night, 
They thought Rick Osborne had won. When the votes come in and they were counted, Rick, uh, uh, Bob Fairchild won the election for state rep and he won it by one vote. So anyone that wants to sit around and say, my vote don't count, don't ever let anyone tell you that because your vote counts more than you will ever know. That one vote can make a tremendous difference in the election. Uh, there's so many elections as far as something that really stands out. Uh, you know, I don't, I can't uh, expound on those because there were so many of them. Uh, talk about your chief deputy who became your successor and then how she did when she went into office. Uh, Karen was, uh, she was my chief deputy, but Karen was also what I classified as the probate clerk. She took care, Karen knew as much about law as most of the attorneys because whenever they would come in to file something and they had to file it in order and they had certain papers they had to file and if they didn't do this or that, then they would be, could, could cause problems in the courts. Karen handled that and then she always trained someone. Shirley Brown always helped her with that. They did an excellent job. And Karen, like I said, whenever I could walk away from the office and the staff I had, I never had to worry about the jobs not being done properly. There was very few times that I was ever gone any length of time. I'd take a summer vacation of one week, but it was very difficult. Tell some stories you remember dealing with the public. I mean, who were some of the public you dealt with? I know you had the election, but who, who were some of the people that would come by that you were, that stand out? Well, you know, marriage license was always quite, a, 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 quite an ordeal because we would have young people come in here to get a marriage license. And when I say, come in here, this is where I sold marriage license, right here in this office. And they would come in to get a marriage license, but the girl might only be 15 years old and the boy might only be 16. Well, in the state of Arkansas, you can't get married at that age and without parents' consent and an order from the judge to get married. And that was only if they were pregnant. So those are things in the marriage license that you have to be extremely cautious of. You had to make sure you always checked the identification. It was amazing to me how many parents would bring their children over to Arkansas from Oklahoma to buy a marriage license because they didn't think they had the age limit on there. And they would want to sign their 15-year-old daughter to get married. That always kind of blew me away. But the, you know, when you're dealing with the public, you can expect just about anything. I will say you one other thing. In marriage license, I looked up one day and there stood Hillary Rodham at that time. And there stood Bill Clinton. They were applying for a marriage license. At that time, I did not know who Hillary Rodham was or I didn't know who Bill Clinton was because they were young people at the university. They were quite yuppies. They had the long skirts and, you know, he had the long hair. And when the day I wrote their marriage license, I didn't know it was going to be history. He was going to be the president of our United States. So that's, that's a fun thing to remember because they've got marriage lessons on the walls in our office in here. So it, that, that's a fun thing. How well did you get to know Bill and Hillary after that? Oh, I got to know them because I was so involved in politics and Bill and Hillary was always, not so much not Hillary, but Bill. And Bill was the kind of person that could walk into a room and he could meet you today. He could see you four years later and he could still call you by name. He had a tremendous memory. And those were the things that, you know, I just always, and I don't care who you are, or if you're at the fairground to a chicken dinner or you're at a catfish dinner and somebody of that caliber walks in and they call you by your first name, we all like to be recognized by our first name. It's just the way we are. We want to be recognized. And he was, he was phenomenal at that. Uh, you know, as far as social circle, I didn't run in the social circle with Bill and Hillary, but um, you know, and people ask me about it, and I say, and I say I wrote their marriage license. Well, that's not saying much, and you know what I tell them? They're still married, aren't they? <laughs> so <laughs> that's more than I can say for a lot of people. We also sold a marriage license to uh, not Peter Fonda. What's Peter's son's name? They were in here shooting a movie. And he, they come in, some people from this movie screen, and they bought a marriage license from us. So, uh, 
Tell the story about the old courthouse and when they took the top off of it. What, why did they do it and how, what was it like when they did it? Well, let's go back a little bit. You know, first of all, the courthouse was pretty much certain offices, but then all of a sudden they needed more room because of our growth. So they started putting up walls. So they started putting up different things in the courthouse to make to make more office room. And that was a very, very uh, this, uh, sad thing for me because I love the preservation of old historical buildings. And, uh, but the day they, they had to take the, uh, I don't know if you want to call it the clock tower off of the old courthouse, because the pigeons had roosted in there and it was so full of mess that they had to clean it up. They had to get that off of there because it was dangerous. Everyone knows that pigeon dung can cause uh, different kinds of diseases and they needed to get that off to clean it up. The day that they brought it back in, they had to close up Highway 71 and direct the traffic around the back way so the cars could get through. And they did that on a Saturday and they had the big helicopters and I'm sure you can get some pictures of that. And they dropped that helicopter, dropped that tower right down on top of the courthouse. And I just kept waiting for it to come through the roof, but it didn't, they did a great job. That was, that was exciting time. And I was so delighted to see them put that tower back up. And then we started later, uh, I can't remember exact years, but I got involved with Judge Marianne Gunn, and we restored all of the old historical circuit courtroom upstairs. It is a picture now, it's beautiful. And we, we had that all restored back to the original state. We took all of this paneling off, that stuff that they'd put up and restored the wood back. Some of the wood in that circuit courtroom that had to be redone was wood that come out of Louisiana and it come out of the swamps because that was the same kind of wood that had been used up there and that's the only place we could get it. And they, got, they used the wood from the Louisiana swamps when they redid that. I've been here a long time. <laughs> um. Talk about when you left the clerk's office and became a state rep and what that was like. Well, I was having a hard time deciding if I wanted to leave the clerk's office. But my chief deputy wanted to run so that she could get her retirement in. So I decided to go ahead and retire from county clerk. And I'm sitting in my office one day, and I was at the new courthouse at this time when I moved up there. John Burrow, which was a dear friend of mine, come in, and he looked at me and he said, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know. And he said, you can't stop doing anything. You've got too much to offer to the county. He said, why don't you run for state rep? I said, are you kidding me? I can't get elected state rep. Well, luckily, they had created a brand new district. I ran for that and got elected. I was the only candidate in Washington County to win every precinct in Washington County. And uh, so I, I, at that, but that one, that was an easy one. That was for clerk, but that was an easy one because I don't think, I'm trying to remember if anyone ran against me for state rep, I can't remember, but uh, I, I won that race. But when I, my, when I ran for county clerk in 1976, I won every precinct in the county. I was, uh, got a report back that night that I had lost Summers. I knew at the time that I had not lost Summers because they were very, very close to me and they were good people. They went back and checked the tallies and when they checked the tallies, they found out that they had transposed the figures and I had one summer, so I won every precinct in Washington County. Tell me about this. <laughs> this is the picture that I used in 1976 when I ran for county clerk. I took office in 1977. You can see there's a little bit of a change there, but these were signs that we had I, I, you know, I didn't know how to campaign. I didn't know how to do any of that. That was all new to me. And I t took this and I had, uh, I, I, ran, uh, I ran that. I had posters, I had pictures. At that time, you didn't have much TV. Pretty much everything was legwork. You had to get out and do it. 
I went to more pie suppers and more chicken dinners than you can ever imagine. People said they were so tired looking at me, they were willing to vote for me just to get rid of me. <laughs> but I won, won that race, and it, it, it's my, the career from there has been awesome. It's been wonderful. And then talk about your decision to go from state rep. Why did you decide to go from state rep and run for county judge? Well, that's kind of another story. I uh, decided to run for state rep, and I was term limited, so I could probably got elected again, but my, t my term had expired. I was in the back of the chamber at the House, House, House of Representatives at the Capitol, and I told Bill Stovall, which is Speaker of the House, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with my time because I'm going to get bored. And he looked at me and he laughed and he said, why don't you go back and run for county judge? I said, you have got to be kidding. There's no woman county judge. He said, do it. I came back and I filed for county judge and I won county judge. I am the only woman in Washington County to ever be elected county judge. I don't know, there may be a couple of women serving as county judge now. I think a couple of them have been appointed in their husband's places where they've had a death. And at one time they tell me, many, many, many year ago, there was some lady in Southern Arkansas. But as for all the records that I find, I'm the only female county judge ever elected in, in Washington County. So what was that like? It was a big switch, obviously. Talk about your early days as county judge. What was it like and how did you do? Well, <laughs> my first week in office as county judge, I was sued. I was sued because they had, was they were building the parking deck on the courthouse, the new courthouse. And they went ahead and they let it go to a contract bidding in place of bidding it out. They let a contractor come in and that's where, and I'm not getting the wording right on this. This is where someone else comes in, manages it for you and builds it for you. And they sued me because yes, the previous county judge had allowed that to happen. And uh, so we had to go back we had to stop everything we were doing. We were already in, within the, the project pretty good. We had to stop everything we're doing. We had to take it back for bids, and we had to bid it out and start it all over. That probably cost the taxpayers a great sum of money because it had already been done once. But those, that's one of the things. So I found out real quick that a county judge can get sued real easy. What kind of advice did you get from your county attorney? I guess, was George Butler then? Uh, was George Butler my county attorney at the time? Yes, I think George Butler was my county attorney, and George was always excellent. George is the kind that never gets too shook up. He is very, very uh, open about everything, but he never makes an answer to a question unless he researches it first. So you pretty much know when George tells you something, that's the way it is, because George knows the law. So I, I relied on George a lot. Now, my chief of staff was Dan Short. He was a military man. He was a retired military, and then he was also a retired state trooper. And he didn't put up with a lot of mumbo jumbo. He pretty much watched everything that was going on. Now, Dan was pretty direct, and sometimes he offended people. So I always tell Dan, okay, I'm going to have to teach you politics because you got to know politics to be able to do these things. But Dan, Dan was a very, very good uh, administrative assistant to me. Uh, what about the help you got from Karen Beeks? I know she goes way back. Talk about it. Karen Beeks had been with three previous county judges and then me. And without Karen Beeks, I could have never been county judge because she knows the history of Washington County better than anyone I know. She remembers ordinances. And that's, you know, when the Quorum Court took over in 1977, that's the same year I came in as clerk, all everything was being changed. And, and Karen, I think, maybe started, she was working for the county judge at the time. 
but Karen would remember ordinances. She would remember resolutions. She knew the law. She could get things done. Karen was my right hand and my left hand. And I still communicate with Karen. Karen is still available for any time I need, sometimes just to go to lunch or just someone to talk to. She was my partner in crime, so let's put it that way. Uh, you, whenever you were judge, you had a pretty large majority of Republican uh, uh, JPs and a lot of opposition, some even from within your own party. What was it like trying to run the quorum court meetings? It was very difficult because if you can get a group, and you know, we, we went from 13 JPs to 15, and anyone knows the larger the committee is, the harder it is to get anything done. And I, you know, I don't want to expound upon the things they did or they didn't do because it makes it sound like I'm whining, and I'm not whining. But you know, if you've got people working with you, then you can do good for the county. If you don't have people working with you, you can't do the job that you were elected to do. So I could have probably run again and been elected county judge, but I was there eight years. I felt like that I knew that my time it was, it was getting more difficult all the time. And I decided that it, I would be better off just to walk away from it and let someone else handle it because maybe they could get more accomplished. I did a lot while I was county judge. We built bridges. We built several bridges. That was one of the tender spots and sore spots of some people trying to cause trouble about the bridges. And that cost the county a tremendous amount of money. We had to, we had to go out and stop building a bridge and completely tear it down and start over because someone thought it was not being done right. It was nothing wrong with that bridge. But it was, it's very difficult when your own party won't support you, let alone when more than half of the quorum court is of the opposite party. So it, it, was, it was tough. I, the first six years was a, a fairly good deal. I got a lot done, but the last two years seemed to be more contentious, and that's no way to run a county. Uh, talk about some of your other officials that you knew over the years. There's so many, Betty Stamps, Al McComeyer, you know, some of the others in the different offices. Who can you well, when I first started, uh, this, this office, no, the office down below this one was the treasurer's office, and Mr. Hugh Sherry, was the treasurer at the time. And Mr. Sherry, you know, I thought Mr. Sherry was old at that time, but he, you know, probably he wasn't any older than me now, but he had a couple of older ladies that worked for him. And uh, then we had Perry Rushing, that was our assessor. <clears throat> and uh, it's just, everything was just so different. There was not that much, people seemed to, work better together. They seemed to, there wasn't as much contention as there is now. Joanne Perry, when, uh, when uh, Mr. Sherry left, Joanne Perry took over Mr. Sherry's position as the treasurer. Joanne did an excellent job. Joanne had a mind of, for math. She was very, very good with math. And she knew all the school people, which she had to work with them a lot. So she did good. And then you got Miss Sue Phillips, which was our county assessor. I don't know how many years, I don't think Sue I don't know how many years Sue had as the assessor, but she had been doing it a long, long time and did a good job. Let's see, and when, then when I came in, uh, Catholic, I'm sorry, uh, Alma Kohlmeyer was the circuit clerk. Then when uh, Alma stepped down, Kathleen Harness took over. And then when she left, Betty Stamps took over. So in the meantime, while I was doing my thing, they had about three circuit clerks. But uh, it was, the offices were just different then. People were just, it seemed like they were closer. They was more, you know, we used to, when we were here at this building and there was all of our older officials, we used to have once or twice a year, everybody would bring a pot for a potluck. We'd have a huge potluck on one of the floors and every, everybody would participate. And that's, that's what makes government fun and what makes it good people working together for the good of the county and the state. What challenges did the new judge face when you came in? I mean, what were you, challenges were you leaving? Well, I was, my, my, my main challenge was trying to get the quorum court to get along and do what was right for the county. And it seemed like that the biggest challenge is they would not work together. 
if the one party wanted it this way, now the other party was not going to vote for it. I mean, that's just that's just the way it is, you know. And I know one of the big challenges the judge has got now is with the, not with the sheriff, but with trying to decide: Are they going to build another another pod on the jail? I mean, you're talking thirty-eight, thirty-nine million dollars. I don't know how the people feel about that. I don't know how they feel about coming up with that kind of money, you know. And that's kind of like the movie: build it and they'll come. Well. That's kind of like the jails, but he's got a responsibility on him that's a tremendous responsibility, and he has to take care of the prisoners because our cities no longer house prisoners, or they're getting so that they are doing less and less. So, and we've got a lot of things in the county as a county judge has to look at. You know, you've got environmental affairs. Environmental affairs is it is one of the biggest things we need right now to be aware of because with our uh, nation and our economy and our young people, look at the problem that the Benton County people have had over that smoke dump. If we don't take care of things like that before they happen, they're going to get out of control and there's nothing, absolutely nothing more valuable than our water in Northwest Arkansas. So how important is having good clean water oh in my. the pipes to Washington, to uh, Washington County? That is, that's what, as I say, that is the most important thing we've got is our water. When I was serving in the house, some people in southern Arkansas wanted to try to use part of our water for an emergency. Well, what you think is an emergency and what I think is an emergency might be two things. So before you do anything else, before you do anything else, you protect our water system. Because you think that this area up here would be as uh, growing and everything as it is now if we didn't have good water? Without good water, we got nothing. I mean, I know we've got uh, Fortune 500 people in this country, right up here around us, and they're very important, but good, clean air and water is one of the most important things we've got. Uh, if you had to tell somebody about Washington County, and maybe they didn't know anything about it, maybe someone you met, and they said, Marilyn, tell me about Washington County. What would you tell them? Washington County is the next thing to heaven. <laughs> it's, we've got everything that most people would love to have. We've got our lakes. We've now got a nice airport. We've got all the stuff. We've got wonderful schools. Our schools are you know, wonderful. Uh, you know, that's these, are, and the first thing that people start looking for when they come here is they start looking at the houses that's in the school districts that they feel like that's where they want their child to go. And we have good school systems here. Uh, we have uh, wonderful uh, camaraderie between all of the institutions, you know. They're, I can't even think of some of them, the Heart Association and Kiss a Pig and all these kind of people. They, they're doing everything they can to raise the money, to try to improve, improve, and they don't do that everywhere. And that's what Washington County does. Um, how would you complete this sentence? My favorite thing about Washington County is? The people. My favorite thing about this county is the people and the, the, uh, the time that you can give to your family. What else can you say that I haven't thought to ask you? But there's just so many things that have changed. Uh, whenever uh, we bought the new courthouse, uh, I didn't know if it was a good buy or not. It wasn't meant for a courthouse, but when we think about the money we got it for, I guess in the long run, it was a good purchase. Uh, you know, we've got uh, building the jail. I, you know, all I'm doing is just putting my two cents in. But if there's some way that the people of the county can work together to try to work something out, but if they can't, they're going to have to get together and they're going to have to do something because if without uh, someone who's taking, we have lawsuits on our hands and our lawsuits are never cheap. We have good schools, we have good attorneys. We have good people, and our churches, we have, we have beautiful, wonderful churches. So this, I can't think of any place else I'd rather be than Northwest Arkansas, Washington County. Uh, what, do you have any stories or memories you can tell, for example, about Judge Butt? He was quite a gentleman in his own right. 
if you wanted to know something legally, you could go to Judge Butt, but you may have made sure that if, when he's available, that you've got the time to listen because Judge Butt would give you the right answer, but he would start at conception and he'll take you all the way through it. But before you got through, you knew exactly what he was talking about. He was, he was, uh, we've, I've known several, uh, I, I knew Maupin Cummins. Maupin was quite a, quite a character, let's put it that way. You know, I knew Malin Gibson, still know Malin and Sandra. We've had some excellent, excellent judges in our time. And uh, that's, that's like something else that's good about Washington County. We have good court systems. We have good judges. We have fair judges. And uh, I like to think that is a positive for all of us here.